So we've got our bass in, we've got our clap and our hat and our kick. I'm going to just dump in some other stuff. We're sort of making a track now. I didn't know how this whole tutorial thing was going to go, but um, I think we need some other other parts in here. So I'm going to load up a ride. That's going to tie in nicely with uh, the side chaining bit in a minute. So import audio file, go out to here. Don't you think it's funny? Audio file makes me think of uh, a PDF file. Don't you think it's funny that Adobe made a PDF file? It's really weird. That'll do for the moment. Let's just load that up. Going to right click, audio events to part. You've all seen this in another bit, so I'm not going to go over it and bore you. I'll show you something quite clever in a moment. Okay, so there's one right. Now, if you wanted to duplicate a track, you just click on it, duplicate tracks. There you go. Going to pan that one slightly right, that one slightly, uh, no, that one slightly right, and this one slightly left. And, um, yeah, you needed to know about pan. I didn't tell you about that. It's pretty easy to, to see there. Now, on this copy one, I'm just going to double click on here and shift the whole thing half a beat off. I'm not going to allow it to enlarge the part. You could have done if you want. I'm going to click on three, which is the scissors. And I'm going to move that to the start of, uh, oh, no, I'm not. I'm going to click just on this bit and put it to the start of the bar. So the ride that's patterned slightly right is going to start off doing the offbeat ride, and the other one's going to do an onbeat ride. So I'm going to turn both of them down, find a volume, and then turn them up. Now that we've got a few parts in kick, ride, hat, clap, an amazing bass. Uh, we want to uh, get them into shape a bit into the mix because uh, although they sound clear, good sample sources, uh, they're not really mixed at all, they're just sort of volumed. Okay, so I'm um, going to show you how to EQ basically. I think the kick's probably quite good. Could be a sort of bit more beefy. So I'm just going to chuck some uh, bass on it. Now I'm going to turn on this EQ2. I'm going to drag it along to the left. I'm going to just turn it up just below 100 hertz, just uh, a random amount. I don't know how loud I want to, how much I want to change that EQ because I haven't heard everything else against it yet. Everything's about comparisons and sort of balancing. So um, I'm just going to leave that how it is and press play again. Just going to drag that volume down a little bit. I'm going to drag these rides down so they sound a bit loud. The hat as well, the clap, and the bass. I'm going to deal with everything individually to some extent. Now, the hat at the moment. I think I need to get a bit more brightness out of that because the rides seem brighter than it. So I'm just going to find a point. Where I like the sound of the actual, I'm not getting the level right of this straight away, I'm finding what the different areas sound like. So I want to hit that sort of top end. But I noticed there was a nice sound uh, further down. Which would sound very hard housey, so I'm going to put that EQ in there. But then I'm going to grab another EQ and just find that lower part. Now you'll find that uh, this is a huge hump affecting a lot of the EQ spectrum from the sort of bass end, the low mid, right up into this mid range and then down again. You can adjust these on all the EQs. You can see that that's adjusting the gain and there's the frequency written in here, one and a half K. And then this says parametric two, that's a sort of narrower band than your parametric one. I'm gonna leave it on parametric two. And I'm just going to drag this bar down the bottom to uh, narrow that band down. We're going to find that sort of chunky sort of sound. Great, we found some sort of sound there. Sounds pretty.
pretty good to me. And uh, we're just going to go onto the clap. Sounding possibly a little bit thick at the moment. So what I mean by thick is kind of the mid-rangey, clumpy area. So I found the thing I don't like. And I'm just going to take some of it out. And there's a secret frequency of about 350 hertz, there or thereabouts. Someone told me it was uh, 250 to 410 who went to some sort of college the other week. I think it was Vinyl Junkie. And uh, it's around this 350 hertz area, just between these two blocks. That holds a lot of uh, muddiness in the things. You don't want to take it out of everything, but um, it can be good for cleaning up things like claps. If you've got it from uh, a clap from a dodgy sample source or possibly a man on the street then you want to click on this EQ1 turn that into a high pass 1 or a high pass 2 just to make sure there's no rumble getting into your mix there's no real difference but if you got it off a record you've probably got some sort of wobbly low bass thing going on and you want to protect yourself against uh, any unnecessary rubbish so uh, there you go the bass this is probably our biggest problem at the moment because it does sound rubbish. And just going to go onto that E button there and mess around with this EQ here. sounds a bit long and it's a bit rumbly and bassy so it's going to highlight all of these go into the part control a i highlighted everything the snap is off just going to see what this sounds like being a bit shorter <laughs> sounds a lot better you can hear the reverb still rumbling on from my earlier mistake so um can I do there? Change the room size. That's quite fun having reverb before um distortion because it uh, makes things a bit more interesting so um you could also move the bit crusher around that'd be interesting you can drag these insert effects up and down and so we could uh, move the bit crusher there in the chain 